So, let me ask you a question. All right? In trading, do you want to be the sniper or be the target? Which one do you want to be? Yeah, the sniper. And if you're not the sniper, what are you? If you're not a sniper, you are a target. If you're not being very specific, yeah, you're dead, you're broke. <laughs> exactly, dead meat. So this is what this whole webinar is about, is about how to be the sniper and do it right from the beginning versus taking bad trades, okay? So as with any financial presentation, I got to do a risk disclosure, right? So there's risk involved in trading, everything's hypothetical, blah, blah. Make sure you go back and read them. You got it down, but make sure you know what you're doing before you do it. Okay? And tonight, we're going to be talking about setup two. But specifically, we're going to talk about the enhanced trades for setup two. Okay? And these are based on 10 tick diagnostic bars. I'm going to go into what diagnostic bars are in here, here in a minute. And we do this on NQ or MNQ. Okay, and you can actually take trades on NQ that if you get setups on MNQ, and you can take trades on MNQ that you get setups on NQ. So there are different markets and different bar sizes, but what I'm going to suggest that you do is focus at least for the next 30 days on NASDAQ and or mini NASDAQ, micro NASDAQ. NASDAQ is worth $5 per tick. A tick is the minimum increment something moves in. Mini NASDAQ is 50 cents a tick. Now you could end up doing two, three, four, you know, sorry, micro NASDAQs are 50 cents a tick. You could do, you know, multiple contracts. Um, you don't have to just do one at 50 cents. You can make it two or four dollars. And some of y'all should be doing that because of the account size you're starting out with. Okay. And our goal is to get three trades a day that are profitable and be up net three trades, basically 30 ticks a day. Okay. If you can do that, then obviously the account grows as you, as you have seen in the 6-3 strategy to be a six-figure um, income in a trading system on just three trades a day. It's not about how many trades you do or how big they are. It's about how consistent you are. So getting started. Again, we're focusing on NASDAQ and mini NASDAQ. If you don't know what that is, that's the NASDAQ 100 index futures. It has things like Google and Apple in it. It moves a lot. Um, a lot of other markets like ES and YM and stuff don't move near as much. Even FX doesn't have the leverage and doesn't have the volatility that you want to be able to go in with precision and get those trades. It doesn't mean you can't trade this on other markets. We have traders trading on other markets. But I'm going to challenge you again to focus on NASDAQ or mini NASDAQ for the next 30 days. You can trade this anytime, day or night. Okay, so you don't have to be, you know, if you have an 8 to 5 job, you can trade this in the evening. And one of the most important things, and you need to remember this, maybe you need to write it down, but as a trader, you are being paid to be patient. Okay, you're being paid to be patient. That's a saying here at Apex. And it, the impatient traders are the ones who are the targets. The patient traders are the snipers, okay? Now, going along with patience is I want to remind you not to chase trades. Don't get in late. There will always be another trade. There will be times when the market moves too fast or you didn't notice it soon enough and you miss a trade. Don't get in a bar late and then hope it works. Okay, we're going for 10 ticks from the high or low. Okay, and one of the other things I want to remind you to do is breathe. If you're new to trading or new to Apex, some of this can feel overwhelming. And you're going to get it down. We're going to lay it out step by step for you. And if you need to watch the video a few times, you can. And you're not alone. You have a team. Not only do we have our trading tools, not only do we have our training, we also have a trade room, we have a forum, we have a Facebook group to answer any questions you have. And we encourage you to ask questions. Okay? And again, we're going to start your training with the highest probability setups Often 85 to 95% of the time, these trades are profitable or have been in the past at least. Of course, there's no promise of future performance. But we've seen this throughout volatile markets, flat markets, holiday markets, trending markets, range-bound markets, on down the list. Okay? And I want to make sure you understand our charts because the charts at first can get really overwhelming. If you've already seen the charts, you may have felt like you were looking at the matrix. Okay? So let's go through 
and let's just identify some things on the chart. I don't expect you to understand them. I don't expect you to memorize all this. I just want you to be able to see it, okay? So again, just to be able to see it. And the first thing I wanna do is talk about diagnostic bars and reversal bars. So diagnostic bars are a type of Ranko bar, but they're more accurate because we pull tick by tick to get the exact volume needed to put into our engine that builds order prints, which is sort of like order flow, but order flow is just numbers. It's a lot of information that's useless. And footprints is great, but again, without having the right knowledge and putting the pieces together is useless. So knowledge is not power. The ability to use knowledge in a formed plan to reach a goal is power, okay? So we got our diagnostic bars. What's gonna happen is every time they move, they're gonna plot an open and 10 ticks from that open in either direction they're gonna plot a new bar. So if this bar closes down right here, then you know it's five ticks, 10 ticks from the open. All right, now a reversal bar, and this is simple but important, is if a bar closes up and the next bar closes down, that's a reversal bar. That's gonna be key in doing this system, okay? Or if a bar closes up and the next bar closes down, or the bar closes down, the next bar closes up. You get the idea. Reversal bar is a bar closing in the opposite direction. Now, what do you need to see on this chart? Because right now, it just looks really confusing. So the first thing, one of the most important things I want you to see are what we call exhaustion boxes, or we short name them X boxes, okay? Are you able to see, if you're looking at this chart, do you see the red boxes and the green boxes? So anywhere you see those, that's an X box, okay? That's like, if you can identify a red box and a green box, like you're, you're right there, okay? That's what you need to be paying attention to. Now, what we really look for inside these is trapped orders, which is this, this little blue thing inside the box. And it has to be on the end of the box, not in the middle. And it has to be in a reversal bar. We want to find X boxes, the red or green boxes, with the trapped orders inside of them. So like there's an Xbox with a trapped order inside. And we can scroll back and we can find tons of these. And these are gonna be a primary part of what we want in order to have a trade, okay? And again, it has to be on the bottom or the top of a reversal bar. There's an Xbox with a trapped order inside. There's an Xbox with a trapped order inside. Let me use the pointer. Here we go. There's an Xbox with a trapped order inside. There's an Xbox with a trapped order inside. Okay, so you're going to be able to see X boxes with trapped orders inside of them. All right, simple enough. Now from there, you want to be able to see the mini magnets. Mini magnets are these, you know, beige lines that you see plotting across the chart. Are you able to see the mini magnets? Is that simple enough? X boxes with trapped orders with mini magnets. Okay. And what we really want to see uh, let, let me add one more piece. The other piece you want to see is paw prints. So do you see the orange box that has a line extending out? Orange box with the line extending out. You see that? Those are what is called paw prints. And again, I don't expect you to understand what all these terms mean. We have another video on that. You don't have to understand what they all mean. You just need to understand first, to be able to trade this system, you just simply need to understand how to spot them. So, what I want you to be able to do is spot an Xbox with a trapped order that has a mini magnet, like right, or a, a paw print. It's like right there, there's an Xbox with a trapped order that has a paw print. Down here, we got an Xbox with a trapped order that has a paw print. Is that simple enough? Does everybody get that? So, really easy. That's just, we're looking for Xboxes with trapped orders that have paw prints or mini magnets on them, okay? Now, there are a few other pieces I want you to be able to identify because they're gonna come into place for the enhanced orders, okay, the enhanced setups. One of them is right here, we can see the clusters. So you see the yellow part that plots on the chart? When it's yellow like that, 
that's a cluster. Yellow, that's a cluster. Yellow, that's a cluster. Okay? And then I want you to be able to see, so has everybody got the clusters down? You see a yellow, you got a cluster. And I'll show you what that means. It's actually one of the most powerful things because what, would you agree that one of the hardest things if you've been experienced in trading is identifying chop, that chop's about to happen. It's always after the fact, right? Clusters help us know ahead of time when chop is going to happen. And I'll show you exactly how we know when it's going to happen at a time to help us avoid bad trades. Okay. We also have ZOIs. So ZOIs are these purple and turquoise lines. You don't really got to care about the color of them or worry about what direction they are. You just literally need to know what they are. So can everybody see the ZOIs on my chart? This purple or this till section, okay? So I'm just trying to get you to where you can see. There's, there's one right there, okay? Go back, there's one right there. Pretty simple, okay? Now that we have that down, I want you to understand what's called bar range. And we have templates we're making that automatically do this for you. But it's these numbers over on the right side. That's the bar range. Okay? So what happens is this first bar range is where if the bar closes and hits that price, a new bar will form. So the first one's where a new bar will form. If this was to have what we needed on it for a reversal bar, an Xbox with a trapped order and a mini magnet, like on a ZOI, then that is where our entry price would be. So it's real simple. I just right click right here and I put a sell stop limit and I can adjust it. I can use a DOM, I can use a chart trader, whatever, to place my order there if it had everything that I needed on it. Okay, and then I click the X to cancel it out. And let me switch over. Uh, okay, we got the first one, the third one up here is our profit target. So let's say if I was going to get in on this trade right here, when I got filled, what will happen is I have an ATM. So let me just select, let me go to SIM so I'm not messing with anything. All right. So if I got filled on the trade, let me cancel the other trade out real quick. Hold on. Don't want to accidentally leave an open trade there. There we go. So let's go back to SIM. And right here I select my ATM strategy. We'll show you how to do that later and how to set that up. But when I put my order on here, if it got filled and it was a valid trade, and I'll teach you what a valid trade is, then I would want to adjust my ATM to automatically take profit at 92.56. Now, when that bought order gets filled, this is all gonna change. And that's what that middle one is. So while I'm waiting on the bar to close, that's my take profit. Once the bar closes, the second level is my take profit. Okay? So I got my entry and my take profit, but once the bar closes down, that'll become my take profit. So I'll be able to adjust my order without having to do math. All right, and you'll understand this more and more as you practice, okay? So those are the things you need to understand. Now we also have what's called an ATM. An ATM is automated trade management. And once you set that up, it'll automatically set your stop loss and take profit for you You'll just need to adjust it to where it needs to be, which again, I'll talk to you more about as we get into the system. The last piece I want you to be aware of, and so right now you've already learned, you know, diagnostic bars, exhaustion boxes with trapped orders inside of them. You've learned what mini magnets are, the white lines, Paul's are, the orange lines. You've learned what ZOIs are, okay? Um, institutional blocks, by the way, are these green or brown lines that plot where large orders are put in the market by large traders. 
Okay, so if you see a green or brown line printing anywhere, then you know that that's an institutional block. Okay, like right up here. So you've learned all the levels you need to know. Like you have them down, you can spot them. If you can see a green line, if you see a brown line, there's a lot of other lines. They will come into place in the future. But right now, I just want you to learn to hone in on Xboxes with trapped orders on reversal bars that have a paw or mini magnet on them. Okay? So, I know that may have been a lot if you're brand new. But just to give you an example, here's an Xbox with a trapped order with a paw print on it. Okay? And what we're going to be looking for is one that has a paw print with one of those levels. And I'm going to go through like a dozen examples with you within two ticks. So see how this mini magnet is within two ticks of an Xbox with a trapped order and a paw print? And it had an existing mini magnet on it? We would have entered. We would have taken profit right down here. Ten ticks later, would have had a stop up here. And the trade, as you can see, would have been profitable. And that's just from today. And then we can go back and we can find a bunch of examples. We'll do some more chart review as we go through it. But these are trades we call it in the room every day. We do very well. And, you know, definitely invite you to hop in the room for free and check it out. Okay? So now that we got all the pieces put together, or now we got all the pieces, let's put them together. Okay? One of the nice things about the enhanced trades is you don't have to worry about the trend. You don't have to worry about every level. You don't have to worry about if you're in range bound markets or choppy markets or whatever. The enhanced trades trade through all of those markets without you having to learn to read the market. Okay? Now we'll teach you how to read the market for additional trades. But again, focus on this on NASDAQ or micro NASDAQ or both for at least the next 30 days exclusively so you can master this strategy. Is that fair enough? Get this down, get three trades a day, you're on your way to six figures, okay? So now that we put all the pieces together, let's go ahead and talk about these seven steps to sniper trading, okay? In all of our setups, we teach you these seven steps. The steps are identify the target, such as the Xbox with trapped orders, with a paw print, okay, or a mini magnet. Identify the pattern, is it on a reversal bar and within two ticks of another OP level? And I'll explain what the OP levels are. Is there anything in the way? That's a big part, the, identify the obstruction. And so I'll go into identifying the obstruction here in a second and also the bar range indicators help you identify the obstructions. Where's the entry, which the bar range helps you with that. Where's the exit, the bar range helps you with that. And then identify cover. This is if you want to maybe tighten up your stop after it's moved so far. And we have some advanced ATM setups where you can make it trail up. And then identify the opportunity. Don't worry about the opportunity to begin with, but the opportunity is the ability to let a trade run, okay? And again, you can get to six figures getting three net trades a day just on 10 ticks. So, so many traders are so focused on getting huge moves that they miss out on, you know, they're trying to get a 30 or 40 tick move when they could get, you know, 10, three tick, you know, or sorry, three 10 tick moves and do fantastic. So let's keep it simple. Let's keep it focused. Okay. So identify the target, an enhanced trapped Xbox. So I'm going to sort of put the words out here for you and then we'll go into some pictures. Okay. To make it a lot easier. The enhanced trapped Xbox. Remember, that's the box with the blue things inside. That's what we're looking for. Okay? And I want to remind you, you can take a trade off of NASDAQ on micro NASDAQ, or you can take a trade off micro NASDAQ on NASDAQ. Okay? So you can use either one, and an enhanced Xbox on either one can be used on either setup. And... We want that trapped Xbox or trapped order with exhaustion box. It has to have a paw or mini magnet on it that it just laid. So for example, like this trade here, trapped Xbox that laid a paw or it had to lay a mini magnet on the bar. Like it started on that bar. Okay. 
It has to be a reversal bar. So the bar has to be closing in the opposite direction of the previous bar. It cannot be a continuation bar. It has to be a reversal bar. And then the last rule is it has to be within two ticks of an OP level. There's a lot of levels on your chart. They will come into play later, but they do not count for this. Just OP or order prints levels. And those levels are a PAW, a mini magnet, an institutional block, or a ZOI. So, for instance, this is an Xbox with a trapped order that laid a PAW. And that needs to be within two ticks of this mini magnet. And it is. Therefore, it's a valid trade to go short on. That's it. Okay? Now, if that was a paw on a paw, that's fine. If that was a paw on a ZOI, then that would work as well. Like, there's a ZOI, it's further than two ticks away. But a ZOI would work just as well. All right, and then the other one being an institutional block, those green or like these brown levels or the green levels I showed you earlier. Like there's a brown one back here. There's a green one. So it has to have an Xbox with a trapped order with a power mini magnet, okay? Just Xbox trapped order with a power mini magnet on it, reversal bar within two ticks of an existing paw, not a paw and a mini magnet on the same bar, but an existing one that already existed. That's what that orange line is for. It lets you know if a paw existed already. Or an existing mini magnet. Or an existing institutional block. Or an existing ZOI. That's the purple and teal levels. Now, ZOIs don't count on MNQ because of the volume being so different. So, you might want to take a screenshot of that. I'll give you a second to do that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's get into it. Chart review. Let's actually dive into examples. All right. So, here is a long trade. This is a Xbox with a trapped order. That weighed a mini magnet on an existing mini magnet right there. So therefore, and I'm going to go through these charts twice, by the way. Okay, all examples are going to go through twice. We'd buy a tick above this, which is where the bar range indicator would be. And we'd get out 10 ticks later. Third stop right here. So that's a mini magnet on a mini magnet. Now a short with a... It weighed at not only a paw, it's a trapped order inside the Xbox that weighed a paw and a mini magnet on a mini magnet. So we'd sell there and we'd buy back 10 ticks later. A long Texas paw. So here's a long trapped order with a paw that weighed within two ticks of a mini magnet. So we'd buy here, we'd take profit 10 ticks later. A short that had a trapped Xbox with a paw on an existing mini magnet. Sell here, we buy back 10 ticks later. Here's a short trapped order Xbox, okay, or a TX trapped Xbox with a mini magnet that weighed within two ticks of a paw. So we'd sell here, buy back 10 ticks later. And these are not cherry picked, this is constant. It did not take me any time to find examples, okay? Over here, we got a long trapped order with an Xbox that weighs a mini magnet on top of an existing mini magnet. So we buy there, we get out 10 ticks later. A short trapped paw with an Xbox on a ZOI, by the way, and a mini magnet and an existing paw. We'd sell there, we'd buy back 10 ticks later. Long Texas mini magnet on an I block. So we go down here, we got a, a trapped Xbox. So the trapped order with the Xbox. The mini magnet with an eye block within two ticks, we'd buy here, we'd sell 10 ticks later. We got a short trapped Xbox with the mini magnet, and there's an eye block within a couple ticks. 
We sell there. I got a good fill on that one. And we bought back 10 ticks later. Okay? So pretty simple. Now, clusters. Remember I said the, there's magic in clusters? So the algorithm that we use behind this, if there are two clusters, two of these yellow things within three bars, then we don't take the next setup trade. Okay? So two clusters within three bars, we don't take the next setup trade. So I would not take this long right here. We could take the trade after that, but we can't take the first setup trade within the range of the cluster. And I'll talk to you more about that. Okay? <clears throat> so let's talk about obstructions, when not to trade. This is probably one of the most important things as a trader to know, is when you shouldn't take a trade. And this is actually really simple, okay? Do not enter five minutes before or after the open at 9.30. Again, do not enter five minutes before or after the open at 9.30. You know, if you're a Euro trader, I wouldn't open five minutes before or after the 3 a.m. open, okay? Do not enter five minutes before or after government news. We actually have government news printing on your chart in the top left. So you can know exactly what time it is and not forget about it. So if there's an earnings announcement coming, not an earnings, but like the, say FOMC is coming out, NFP is coming out, you know, whatever's coming out, just don't trade five minutes before and after it because it'll me like it messes the orders up and you're taking a possibility trade, which is like a 50-50 trade versus a probability trade. And you want to be paid to be patient to take probability trades. So five minutes before government news and after government news, five minutes before and after the open, and then we're in earnings season right now, and you'll you know we'll be in this obviously season four times a year, and we talk about that in the room. Don't enter five minutes before the close. So at three biscuit three fifty five p.m. Stop trading, because too many wild things can happen, and you're going into probabilities based on fundamental news release versus based on order flow and order prints. Now, uh, do not enter directly into a stack. A stack is three. OP levels, which again, the only things that are OP levels, nothing else but these things are OP levels. Mini magnets, paws, ZOIs, and I blocks. Okay? If there's three of them within that take profit range, don't take the trade. Okay? So if I grab my chart and I put it back over here, and let's say we had a trapped Xbox. And we got a mini magnet on there. Let's say there was a Xbox on it. And it's within a couple ticks of an existing ZOI. And we were going to go short here. Again, remember that third level is our take profit level. Okay? If there are paws, like mini magnets, institutional blocks, or ZOIs, if there's three of them before that take profit level, do not enter the trade. We call that a stack. Okay, that's an OP stack. And there are other stacks I'll teach you later, but this is the one stack that matters for the enhanced trades. If you got three, you got a paw here, you got a mini magnet here, you got a ZOI here, do not take the trade. As you can see right here, we have nothing in the way. If I got one thing in the way, that's fine. If I got two, it's okay. If I got three, I do not take the trade. Okay, so if there are three things in the way of those four things I've listed out, paws, mini magnets, I blocks and ZOIs do not take the trade. Okay? That trade has to have nothing in its way. The other thing is, like I mentioned on the clusters, do not enter when you have two clusters within three bars. That third bar could include the setup bar. So the bar that you're going to enter, you know, a tick above or tick below. And I'll show you that in an example. Now, if it break, if it has two clusters and it breaks on out of it, you're fine. But if it's still ranging inside that cluster area, until it's given a valid enhanced trade, which you're going to skip, you don't take the first one. You only take the second one if you get two clusters with three bars and that trade is within that range of those clusters, meaning the bar would cross those clusters. Okay? Those are the only times we don't take the trade. A single cluster means nothing. Don't worry about it. It's okay to have a single cluster. 
if a cluster forms after, like a second cluster forms like right after you get in, it's okay. You may choose to get out at break even if you want to on that because it's probably going to chop around a little bit. But you still can stay in the trade. But you may choose just to go, you know what, this one, two clusters, that means chop. I just want to get out of the trade. I don't want to ride through this thing. And just set your take profit to break even. That's all you need to know, okay, on obstructions. Identify the entry. Remember we talked about the setup bar is always a reversal bar. And everything I've just said, I'm going to go through the examples again for you, okay? It's one tick above or below is where you're going to set your order, the breakout of the setup bar. And again, the bar range indicator right here, that first bar right there, if we were going to do a reversal bar on this, then this would be our entry. Okay? Always a reversal bar, always a tick above or below. Identify the exit. Now we say 10 tick scalp. Sometimes you may only get 9 ticks. You may only get 8 ticks. Okay? What's really important that you get is this is not 10 ticks from where you got filled. This is because your fill may be better or your fill may be worse, okay? And to help with your fills, you're gonna wanna use a stop limit offset, okay? So I don't know if you noticed, but I said place the order. I said, you know, like here, like buy stop limit, okay? And if you just use a buy stop, that's a market order you can get filled at a wretched price. And so you just go over here and you right click on chart trader properties. And where it says stop limit offset, you can set that to either zero or one. Okay. That'll make sure you don't get filled more than one tick below where you put the entry. But the really important part, the part that so many people mess up on, and sometimes this makes a big difference because it moves exactly to your profit. It happened on one of the trades today. It moved 10 ticks exactly to our line and then reversed. And if you didn't set it correctly, you would have lost on the trade. So if I got in at 92.61, I'd want to get out at 92.63.50 or two and a half points away, okay? From the high of the bar, because the high of the bar is actually going to be 92.61. So 10 ticks from the high. Let's say I got in on this bar. 10 ticks below this bar, which would basically be the low of the second bar, I'd want to get in on. Or out, sorry. So I'm getting in right here. I'd want to be out right at the low. I don't have to wait for this bar to close. The bar may not close. It may go right to that point and reverse all the way back up. I want to adjust my take profit to always be 10 ticks below the low. Or if I'm buying, 10 ticks above the high. Not from my fill price. Okay, again, 10 ticks from the high or 10 ticks from the low, not from your fill price. You will lose money wanting that one more tick. You'll be risking like almost 30 ticks to make one more tick. It doesn't make sense. Just let it be less profit. Put your profit where it needs to be. Okay, now your stop. Where does your stop loss go? Your stop loss is going to go on the other side of the bar. So let's find a valid entry. Go back here. In, well, without finding them, I'll just go into the example. But here's okay. Here's a valid entry. So I have an entry right here. Notice I have one mini magnet in the way, but I don't have three in the way. Okay, so one is fine. I don't have a stack. So I go short there. I'm gonna take profit ten ticks from there, but I'm gonna put my stop at the high. Now, if you want to use a best practice, put your stop two more ticks away above the high of the mini magnet to really you know give it room in case it does pull back to move it'll often bounce off that level so at least a tick above the high of the bar if you're going short or a tick below the low of the bar if you're going long but if you got that mini magnet or paw or institutional block right there put it a tick above that i mean risk a few more ticks but give yourself increased probability on the trade to not get stopped out okay but that's got to be within just, you know, four ticks. Really, it's got to be within two ticks for the rules. So what about cover? Identify Now, these trades often will go for more than 10 ticks. However, again, 
We're going for 10 ticks, and it can lead to an easy 3-0, and done for the day, don't keep trading, win ratio for the day. Or at least a net 3. Meaning you're up 30 ticks. If you're right at a level, like let's say 7 or 8 ticks, you could choose to tighten your stop to like 2 ticks behind break even or even at break even. And we, we have an ATM that shows you how to do that on autopilot. Okay. But if you're coming right into a level like at eight ticks, like let's say if we we're looking at this chart right here, there was a mini magnet like right there. And it comes down to that mini magnet. I might want to tighten my stop down to, you know, just a couple ticks risk or break even just in case it doesn't break through it. Okay. So that's cover. And that's optional. You don't have to do that, but it can save you a loss sometimes if it bounces off the level. Um, again, an, automat an ATM will automatically, and I'm going to teach you how to do that in the next section when you get into the whole ninja setup. I'll teach you how to set up your ATM. It can automatically place your stop and your take profit. It'll cancel one when the other's filled. Important, you need to adjust it. It is not, it is an assistant. Okay, it is not a replacement for you. So when it gets to that 10 ticks below the low or that 10 ticks above the high, you need to adjust it. If it doesn't put your stop, a tick above the high on a short or a tick below the low on a long, you need to adjust your stop. Okay? And one other tip for you, let's say you get a great fill, like you put the order in and it pops up and you get four ticks better, then just go for the 10 ticks. Don't move it down further. Just grab the original 10 ticks. Okay? So let's look at these examples again with everything I've said to make it come together. Looking for... An Xbox, a trapped Xbox, trapped with, you know, has trapped orders inside of it, with a mini magnet on a mini magnet. We're going to enter a tick above the high, which the bar range will tell us. We're going to put our stop a tick below the low, and we're going to put our take profit 10 ticks above the high. I'm not taking any old Xbox. I'm not taking any old trapped Xbox. I'm not even taking an Xbox with just a mini magnet or just a paw on it. It has to have a mini magnet or paw and be on another mini magnet or paw or institutional block or ZOI. So we got institutional, or we got a uh, Xbox with a trapped order with a mini magnet on a mini magnet, grab 10 ticks. We got an Xbox with a paw and a mini magnet within two ticks of another mini magnet. We're gonna sell here. We're gonna put our stop loss. In my case, I put it right above the mini magnet. And then we're gonna grab our take profit 10 ticks lower. So right about here, okay? We got an Xbox with a paw, that, a trapped Xbox with a paw. That's within two ticks of a mini magnet. So we're going to put our entry here. We're going to put our stop below this. And we're going to grab profits 10 ticks higher. Right here, we got a short with a trapped Xbox with a paw on a mini magnet. We're going to enter one tick below with our stop right above. And we're going to grab 10 ticks. Right here, we got a trapped Xbox with a mini magnet. Two ticks away from a paw. Notice there's a cluster. We don't care. It's only one. We're going to enter one tick below the low. Put our stop right above the high here. In this case, I'd put it right above the paw. And then we're going to take profit 10 ticks below the low, like right there. We got a long trapped Xbox with a mini magnet on top of an existing, again, an existing mini magnet. We're going to put our entry one tick above there where the bar range says. We're going to put our stop one tick below the low. And we're going to take profit right there 10 ticks we got a short xbox with a paw with trapped orders it's on top of an existing paw it's on top of a magnet it's on top of a zoi i mean this thing is loaded we're going to take a short right here we're going to put a stop right above and we're going to put our take profit 10 ticks from the low so if it put our take profit down here on the atm we'd adjust it to be right there okay we got a long trapped Xbox with a mini magnet on top of a I block. We're going to put our entry right here. It's going to pull way against us and freak us out. Okay. We're going to have our stop right here below the either the mini magnet or you could put it below the I block there. And then we're going to grab our take profit 10 ticks higher. Okay. We got a short trapped Xbox with a mini magnet two ticks away from an I block. We're going to put our stop here. We're above the eye block. We're going to put our entry one tick below the low. I got a better fill on that one. 
And then we're going to take profit right here, 10 ticks from the low. In this case, I got 10 ticks from where I got filled. All right, that is how it works. Now you can replay that and replay that and replay that. But that's how it works. And the reminder on the clusters, if we got two clusters within three bars, so it could be a back-to-back -back or it could be three bars. So cluster, cluster, okay? And then over here we have an Xbox, but it's not trapped, so it's not an you know, entry right there. And then we get a trapped Xbox. That technically would be a trade you'd want to avoid unless you have advanced reading, okay? Now this action plan, I want you to take a screenshot of. And I want you to save it. These are the areas where we see people get stuck and not make it, okay? So if you will follow these steps, they will greatly help you accomplish your goals in trading. Can't hit pause fast enough. There we go. So copy this, okay? You know, do a screenshot of it. Step one. Right after this, I want you to set up Ninja Trader. It should not take you longer than an hour. A lot of you will be done in 30 minutes. If it takes you longer than an hour, I want you to go to the top of the website where there is the account menu, and I want you to submit a help desk ticket, and we will help you. We will hop on your computer and help you get Ninja Trader running. It is important that you try to do it yourself, but if it takes you longer than an hour, I don't want you to be frustrated and quit because you can't get the platform set up, okay? So, you know, have some effort, have some ambition. You want to accomplish this. It's good for you to know how to do it, but if you get stuck, don't try to be on an island by yourself and just give up or spend three days doing it, okay? You got a limited trial. Make the most of it. Go through the steps. You should be done in an hour. If you're not, ask for help. As soon as your ninja is set up, I want you to get in the trade room. Okay, the elite trade room. It's open around the clock. NASDAQ and micro NASDAQ are open 22 plus hours a day. We also have a forum. There's a link below where the room's at where you can go to the forum. We also have a Facebook group. You can ask questions in the trade room. You can ask them on the forum. You can ask them on the Facebook group. I monitor all of them. If you don't get your answer in the trade room, maybe it's just light that night or something like that, hop over to the forum and post a question or hop on the Facebook group and post a question. I, I watch the Facebook group around like constantly, even on the weekends. And so do other traders. Ask your questions, okay? Learn how to place trades and begin demo trading literally today. Set up your ninja and learn how to place trades. I don't care if you just place trades on every reversal bar just to get used to it to begin with, okay? Learn how to place trades, then make sure you're learning how to actually do the, you know, the setups, the enhanced setups. Now, if you get a message for your data trial that you've exceeded your limit for data, ask us for help or ask in the room for help. I've seen so many people quit because they don't know what to do then. So if you get that message, ask us for help. And get your futures account set up today. So again, I want you to get in the elite room today. I want you to learn how to place trades today. I want you to get your futures account set up today. Why do I say that? You're like, well, I got to get this down before I do it. Listen, it only takes $400 to fund an account. You get a micro account funded with 400 bucks, but it can take three weeks sometimes to get the account open. Do you want to wait until you get it down and then wait three more weeks before you can start making money? Just fund the account. It's a deposit. You can always withdraw the money if you decide you don't want to do something. But get your account funded. The links are under the Ninja Trader section below. Okay? In step seven. But get your futures account set up. And we may change the step order or whatever, but it's under the Ninja Trader section. Get it set up. You can always fund it with more money later, but let's get you going. There's something about knowing that there's live money there that you can trade that gets you motivated. And it helps. And if you really want to do this for real, your plan should not be to trade in demo for the next six months. Your plan should be to go in, be consistent, do well, and start trading live and getting paid to trade. Okay? I want you making money so you're, when you pay for the subscription, you're paying out of your profits, not out of your pocket. But that can't happen if you don't get an account funded right now. The next thing is, in that elite room, in the forum, in the Facebook group, post your charts of your trades. Because here's a big thing. You don't know what you don't know. Until someone who does know sees what you don't know and understands, and they help you. Again, you don't know what you don't know until somebody who does know sees what you don't know and helps you. 
And that will not happen unless you ask questions. And a lot of you are going to be shy. You don't want to look stupid. You don't want to ask this or that. I remember when I first started trading almost two decades ago, and I called up Thinkorswim, and I'm like, how do I place a call order on Sprint? They're like, we'll do it for you. I'm like, no, I want to know how to do it. I didn't mind sounding stupid because you know what? Now I can place any kind of order I can possibly imagine. But I had to ask a lot of questions to get there. So ask questions. A uh, quote by Confucius is, he who asks a question is a fool for five minutes. He who never asks is a fool for life. So ask your questions. Post your trades. Don't try to look good. Try to get good. Okay? And the best traders we have, the ones that last the longest, are those who ask questions and post charts constantly from the beginning. The most annoying traders become the best traders. Okay? So don't feel like you're annoying us. We are like, oh, wow, that person has potential. Okay? So, but you should be posting charts like from day one. And again, down under the Elite Room, we have a link that shows you how to take a screenshot, mark it up, and post it. Watch the Understanding Charts videos. So I've done some arranging. I'm going to add these videos. They actually explain everything on the chart and help you understand the why and the what behind everything we do. You don't have to do that today. But today, you do need to get Ninja set up. You need to get in the trade room. You need to learn how to place a trade. You need to get your futures account going. And then by tomorrow, you should be posting charts. Okay? Begin trading live as soon as you have this down consistently. Don't be one of those traders that's playing a video game for the next nine months. You're in this to be profitable. Once you're consistently profitable, and if you're following these rules, what we have seen so far is that traders have been very consistently profitable. What we've also seen is traders who don't share charts don't do well because they make mistakes because they think they watch this video 12 times and they understand it, and they probably had one simple misconception. So post your charts so we can help you get consistent. How, how soon do you want to be consistent and profitable? Do you want to be consistent in three months, in three weeks, in three days? How soon do you want to do it? Because the sooner you do it, well, that's the sooner you start posting charts inside the rooms. Okay, after that, do the what's next section. That will sign up and get you access to the mentor rooms, the 6-3 plan, and the 90-day challenge. And you'll learn more about that under the what's next section. You can watch that tomorrow or the day after. Once you've mastered enhancing setups, you can then learn to take other Xbox trades known as naked trapped Xboxes. I'm going to do a whole new training on these for you, Okay. But your first 30 days, focus on the enhanced setups. Once you got the Xboxes down, both the enhanced ones that you're learning now and the naked ones you'll learn later, then I'll teach you four other setups. But for the next 30 days, enhanced Xboxes. 30 days after that, you can add in naked Xboxes. And then going forward from that point here in 60 days, you'll learn four other powerful setups. But be focused. Okay? I mean, this is an action plan that you have to choose to take if you want to make it. If you're not willing to do this right now, you're not going to make it. I'm giving you the clearest possible path to success that I can. I'm trying to help you. I'm doing everything I can to help you. Not only in training, not only in tools, not only in the room, customer service, everything I can to help you. I call everybody and I either leave a message if they're not there or I talk to them live. I'm doing everything I can to help you. But you have to put this action plan into place if you really have a desire to change your life and be a profitable trader. So, we're going to end where we started. Get started. Start off focusing on NASDAQ and micro NASDAQ. You can trade anytime, day or night. You are being paid to be patient. Don't chase your trades and get in late that will be another trade breathe through the entire process come back and watch it again whatever you need to do but start taking action we're starting you right now with the highest probability setups and i look forward to seeing you in the room today okay, this is daryl martin with apexinvesting.com